Hey, this is Wolf from Armory Terrain, and Halloween is less than a week away. So here I am in my workshop late on a Saturday night, racing to catch up because I have so much left to do. All comes down to time management, and obviously my time management is quite poor. So what am I doing? I'm building a fireplace. My parents have decided to come up for Halloween, and my mum's going to be playing a witch, which is completely out of character for her. And so she's going to need a fire to put a cauldron on. So the first step was to cut a shape out of 6mm MDF, and then, unlike other makers, such as, say, Wicked Makers, who do a really good fire tutorial, I decided to cut some polystyrene, or polystyrofoam blocks, rather, to go around. These will end up being painted a reddish brick colour, and they were just cut out of a billet of foam which was left over from another project, which you'll see sometime after Halloween. So just cut the rectangular blocks out, beveled all the corners around the top and also the corners going down the sides, and I glued them on with some tacky glue. Now I could have used PVA glue or Elmer's white glue, whatever you want to call it. But either that or tacky glue, everything else will dissolve the polystyrene. Now, once I had them glued down, I went to my very, very favorite technique and put a layer of tissue over the top of it with some watered down PVA glue. And what that does is it seals the foam so when I'm spraying colors onto it later, it doesn't dissolve or cause big gaps. And then I painted it in black because white tissues with white glue on white polystyrene, it's very hard to see if you've missed any bits. Whereas when you paint the black on the top, the white bits show out really well. So what's going to be the light source for the fire? Well, we went to Bunnings and we got 11 meters of light wire. And this is cool because it lights up as you get sound near it, as well as 13 different options. Now for Halloween, this is going to just sit on a grass lawn. So this wire will come out of the fire pit and just sit in under it and that'll be fine. For other occasions when I'm using it indoors, I'll be concealing this, probably painting up as a brick and just inserting it onto the end of one of these things. So my next step is to get some gaff tape and tape this down inside here in concentric circles or backwards and forwards or however it ends up working. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you the effect before we spray the foam into it. Okay, so I've managed to get all 11 meters of the light cord taped down. And with the gaff tape, I taped it to a table first, then cut it in thirds lengthways, and just cut the sections off. Now for the expander foam. But the expander foam needs to go onto a damp surface, so let's cycle these lights to the off position. Come on lights, circle off. I did mention those 13 settings, right? Okay, now that I've cycled it off, I'm actually going to remove the batteries so it cannot make a circuit. So after going to all this effort, I don't want to destroy my thing now. Okay, water bottle with a squirty bottle just with water. So squirt, 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 squirt. And then I have a can of Parafix foam fill. It expands three times its size. So all I do is give it a shake for 30 seconds. Mind you, I've already been shaking this for a little while. Then I screw on the um, tube for it. That's the word, tube. I turn the can upside down and I spray into this area. 
Now it says on the can, don't spray more than five centimeters thick at a time. Also, only fill to one third of the size that you're going to require. So, here goes with that concept. Okay, can is inverted. Let's see if it'll work. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm now going to give it a little bit more water squirt just to make sure it'll cure properly. And now for the waiting game. We'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, while I'm waiting for this to set, I'm going to go out and find some little sticks and so forth to put in the top of this. I also think I might smooth it down a little bit with a damp paddle pop stick or similar. Maybe a tongue depressor is a better size. Although it kind of looks cool all over the place like that. Hopefully the camera will show how it lights through the expanding foam. With the fluoros on in my workshop you can barely see any lighting at all. But once you make it a bit darker it glows quite happily. Now most other people I've seen have sprayed it red and then sprayed it black. But I think I'm just going to go over the high points with a um, light grey paint to show ash. Or maybe black to show charcoal, I'm not sure yet, probably the light grey. And then paint the bricks, glue some grass around it and it should be good. Well here ends part one of my fire pit build. Let's throw a little bit more light onto it. You can see the bricks around it and the fact that I've just painted the tops of each curve grey. So, I think it looks pretty cool. So now to see what everyone else thinks. Come back and join me soon for part two where I add a swinging kettle over the coals.